our <coughs> 17th and last uh, lecture is part two of problem solving uh, which is from page 104 and this uh, is number four in your book now you'll notice that we've got uh, sign 20 10 10 so straight away I'm going to change sign 20 to sine of 2 theta to sine 10 cos 10 and then I've got tan 10 which is sine 10 over cos 10 and then 1 over tan 10 is same as the opposite cos 10 over sine 10 degrees so now when we multiply out you'll find the cos 10 will cancel off so I will have 2 sine squared 10 degrees now let me keep the 2 outside as well so it'll be useful so I'm going to only multiply that and then if I cancel the sine 10 I will get cos squared 10 degrees so sine squared 10 degrees plus cos squared 10 degrees is 1 2 times 1 is 2 The next problem that we're tackling is uh, problem number 20 on page 105 and problem number 20 is saying that uh, triangle triangle RST um, with triangle RST and that is 90 degrees and you got 5 for RS that's 12 and 13 now you notice I've drawn the triangle as a 90 degree uh, the same right angle triangle because of uh, 5 12 13 now the question here is to find the RP we've got is by 6 that angle and the question we want here is to find the value of SP now the problem here is let us take uh, let's call this uh, small A and that will be 12 minus A whether we use it is another issue so we're looking at basically sine alpha which is A over RP We're looking at cos of alpha which is 5 over rp now let us try to uh, look at this in the context of sine 2 alpha now sine 2 alpha is actually sine 2 alpha is 12 over 13 and this is the same as saying 2 sine alpha cos alpha is equal to 12 over 13 and that means sine alpha times cos alpha you can see something happening here and then I can substitute sine alpha as a over rp times 5 over rp is equal to 6 over 13 now you will realize from this that I've actually got rp squared now rp squared 
is equal to a squared plus 25. So I've got 5a over rp squared. rp squared, according to this, is 5a a squared plus 25. And that's equal to 6 over 13. Now cross multiplying, we would get the equation 6a squared minus 65a plus 150 equals 0. And then you get a is equal to 15 over 2 or a is equal to 10 over 3. Now, if you look at this problem here, which is number 22 on page 105, uh, it says that uh, that uh, two lines, uh, let's say they meet, and strategically you can say they meet on that, and then you've got the gradients are given. Now, the gradients are given and we can work from that and let's call this gradients M2 and M1. And we can call this angle A and that angle B. Now, A minus B is your theta. Remember the A minus B is your theta. Now we want to find, they want you to give the uh, value of k, which is k sine theta is equal to k over 13. Now looking at that problem there, um, let us unpack what we're getting here, right? Uh, 2 plus a, 3m1 all over 3 minus 2m1 is equal to m2 over 1. Cross multiplying, we'll get 3m2 minus 2m1 m2 is equal to 2 plus 3m1. And now if you had to reorganize this entire thing, yeah, we would get, let's say, I'm going to keep the um, M1, let me just see, M, M2 minus M1. I need M2 minus M1. So let me just reorganize this here and what we will have is 2 m1 m2 plus 2 if I take it on that side and then I will get 3 m2 minus 3 m1 and then if I remove the common factor I will get 2 into m1 m2 plus 1 and remove the common factor here with 3 into m2 minus m1 and then I've got 2 thirds is equal to m2 minus m1 all over uh, 1 plus m1 m2 I think all of you could see the trigonometric ratio coming up here very nicely. And that would mean that, you remember I put that as uh, A minus B. So I've got tan of theta is equal to tan of A minus B. And tan of A minus B is tan A minus tan b all over 1 plus tan a tan b. Now you will notice now that this is the 
perfect situation of a tan of theta because tan of a minus b is that and the and that corresponds to that which is equal to two thirds so if I put the two thirds here I will be perfect so tan of theta is equal to 2 over 3 which means that is y over x and your r is y over x and your r is equal to the uh, square root of 13. So if I say sine of theta it's k over root 13 which is y over r and y should be 2 over root 13 and therefore k is equal to 2. This is problem number 30 on page 106. Now if you look at it, it says 11 numbers are written in a descending order and the middle number, so very quickly, 11 numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The middle number, which is a sixth number, is the average of all the 11 numbers. So if the middle number is x, it is the average of all 11 numbers. Then they say the average of the largest six numbers, because it's descending order, the average of the first, I'll call it 1, is 70. The average of 1 is 70, so the total of 1 is 70 times 6 is 420. Now then they say the average of the smallest 6, I'll call it 2, is 50. So the total of 2 is 50 times 6 is 300. Now it is obvious now that they are saying that this average, so we got the we got the total for the twelve. So the total for the twelve numbers is actually seven hundred and twenty. And the average of the twelve numbers is sixty. Now actually we don't have to proceed any further from this point here because what what is happening is uh, the x is repeating itself and uh, since the x is repeating itself and if you found if you took the average of the 11 numbers so if you took the average of the 11 numbers let's assume that plus that sum is y so you got y plus x over 11 will give you x. And then, now if you take the average of 11 numbers, and if you take the average of the 12 numbers, so what you're going to basically be doing saying y plus x plus x divided by 12. And we notice now that you will have the y plus x is 11x, 11x plus x is 12x divided by 12 is x. So it comes to the same thing and your answer is 60. And, uh, but then the question here was find the average of the largest 5. So the average of the largest 5, the largest 5 will be 420 minus 60, which is 360 divided by 5, and that is 72.